dear students assalam alaikum i hope all of you are doing fine and hope all of you are finding my videos useful many of the students have given a very positive feedback and some students were difficulties discuss some parts of the videos and the handouts with me on the moodle platform use the chat in moodle that's the best way we can discuss the contents of the handouts and the contents of the videos last week we learned how to differentiate using the basic limit definition now see it is difficult to use limit definition in all the functions the reason is it takes more time and lot of steps are there one can make some small mistakes so in order to save time it is best to differentiate using the formulae there are many functions and every function has a formula for differentiating it there are hundreds of functions it's very difficult to remember hundreds of functions so we shall concentrate on some of the basic functions now just let me recall now the limit definition we will not discuss today we have discussed it whole of last week and we have seen some examples including sine and cosine now today we shall look at some of the basic functions now look at this formula number 1 derivative of a constant function derivative of a number is zero the number can be big can be small can be negative can be positive can be zero derivative of any number is zero second formula derivative of a constant multiple see sometimes we have numbers not sometimes many times and all the times some number coming in the function we have seen examples like this Now this number is multiplying u c times u. So what we do is in this v c times u. The c comes out and you just differentiate the function. And in the short form we write it like this. The first column here has the full form and here is the short form. Now the third formula is derivative of sum or difference. Sum means plus addition. difference means subtraction which is minus so when you are adding and subtracting two function you do them one at a time u is the first function v is the second function so derivative of u plus v is derivative of u plus derivative of v same thing happens for minus plus and minus are usually together in most of the topics in mathematics except logarithms then the next formula is the product rule the product rule means multiplying cross u into v 2 into 3 6 so 2 into 3 you are multiplying first function with the second function so what you do is first function into derivative of second function plus first function derivative second function plus first derivative of the first function the order is not important you can do it in any order it is u prime v plus u v prime this comma is called prime in mathematics so u v prime is u prime v plus u v prime now comes the quotient rule please remember in the product rule when you multiply the two functions you have the addition here look at the addition here we do not have any subtraction here next comes the quotient rule a quotient rule says by dividing one function with the other so the rule is v du dx minus u dv dx divided by v square see v is down u is up u over v whole prime is u prime v minus u v prime divided by v square next comes the chain rule chain rule is function of a function so dy by dx is dy by du into du by dx so you write the derivative of y and then write the derivative of u 
now these are the six basic rules which we are going to use we have you discussed these rules in the last class in detail in the earlier part of this week so these six rules are not new for you the chain rule will look little different but do not worry about it today the first five rules we have used in the last class using the formula now as i told you there are hundreds of functions but how many we are going to discuss only 13 and in among the 13 functions the first nine are most important see these functions are written in a logical order so you just start with the first then go to the second then to the third and so forth the 13th function is the least important the first is the most important now in every row we have two formulae now what is it derivative of x power n is n into x power n minus 1 we have discussed this both in the definition which special cases did we do x power 1 x power 2 now same thing happens when you have function to the power of n now here you have u power n here you have x power n so the rule here is n into x power n minus 1 here it is n into u power n minus 1 into derivative of u. For example, if u equal to just x, derivative of x is 1. So this quantity du by dx will become 1. So this is more general on the right. And the, what you see first here is special case of this. So this is the general case. This is the special case. Now derivative of sin x is cos x. Derivative of sin u is cos u. What the derivative of sin? Cos. Do not change anything inside. Whatever is happening is happening outside. Here you multiply with du by dx here also. So derivative of sin is cosine. If it is x, you have a 1 here which we do not write. So derivative of sin is cosine. Derivative of sin u is cosine u. Just remember to multiply by du by dx. In all these 13 formulae, you are multiplying by du by dx on the outside. Now, derivative of cosine is minus sign. Please remember there is a minus sign here. Derivative of cosine is minus. So, derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Derivative of cosine u is minus sin u du by dx. Derivative of tan x is secant square x. Derivative of tan u is secant square u du by dx. Derivative of cot x is minus cosecant square x. Csc is cosecant. Derivative of cot u is minus cosecant square u du by dx. On the outside you always multiply du by dx. Why we don't multiply here? Here also we are multiplying but it is not visible. Because the derivative of x is 1. So we are having 1 here which we cannot see at the end. No need to write. 10 into 1 is 10. 5 into 1 is 5. So we do not write the 1 here, here and here and here in any formula. We write it only when it is needed. Derivative of secant x is secant x tan x. Now derivative of secant u is secant u tan u du by dx. Derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x cot x. Cosecant u is minus cosecant u cot u du by dx. Now, just let's relook at it. First one is x power n. This is the most common function you get. x power n is a very common function we get. From 2 to 7, we have 6 trigonometric function. In a triangle, we have 6 ratios sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant x. Even if you have forgotten your trigonometry, do not worry. You have to just memorize these formulae as they are given to you. Now, please remember derivative of sine is plus cosine. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. Tangent is plus secant square. Cotangent is minus cosecant square. Secant x is secant x tan x. Cosecant x minus cosecant x cot x. Now, three of them are positive. Three of them are negative in the derivative. Which three are negative? If you start with C, look here. Sine starts with S, positive. Cosine starts with X, C, it is negative. 
cot starts with c it is negative cosecant starts with c it is negative so the six ratios three are positive three are negative if it starts with c it is negative you have to put the minus here look cosine minus sine cot minus cosecant square cosecant x minus cosecant x cot x so the one which starts with c these are negative the remaining three are positive now we have finished the six trigonometric function and the common function n into x power n minus 1 now what are the other functions the other function is exponential function e power x the derivative is e power x this is a very very special interesting function when you differentiate you get back the same function this will discuss more when the time comes now derivative of e power u is e power u du by dx derivative of ln x this is not 1 not n this is ln natural logarithm so derivative of ln x is 1 by x we call it ln x or natural logarithm x is 1 by x and derivative of ln u is 1 by u du by a, dx just remember the du by dx whenever you have something different from x if it is x you directly write the answer here you have to put an extra part in the answer which is du by dx now the six trigonometric functions have their inverses also we will be doing the four important inverses sin inverse it is 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x square derivative of cos inverse x is minus 1 by 1 minus x square please remember it starts with c so it is negative derivative of tan inverse x is 1 divided by 1 plus x square derivative of secant inverse x is 1 divided by these two lines means absolute value square root of x square minus 1 please remember sin inverse and cosine inverse it is 1 minus x square in secant inverse it is x square minus 1 under the root this means modulus the mutlak in the 13th formula now in the 12th formula there is no square root for when you differentiate the tangent same thing happens here on the right sin inverse u is 1 divided by 1 minus u square instead of x you are going to have u and then on the outside you have du by dx again here it is cos inverse x the derivative is minus 1 divided by 1 minus x square under the square root here you have cos inverse u same remember the minus when you start with c it is the minus in this formula in these 13 formula not at another place minus 1 divided by 1 minus u square under the root the structure is same just remember the du by dx now tan inverse x the derivative is 1 divided by 1 plus x square tan inverse u is 1 divided by 1 plus u square du by dx derivative of secant square x is 1 divided by absolute value of x into square root of x square minus 1 now the derivative of secant square u is 1 divided by absolute value of u into square root of u square minus 1 into du by dx now these 13 formulae are for 13 functions these six formulas are the rules of differentiation do not mix up the things these rules will be used even when the function is new there are hundreds of functions not only these 13 so whenever you have a 14th or a 15th function or a 100th function you will be using these six rules to differentiate whenever you are adding subtracting use rule number 3 when you are multiplying two functions use rule 4 rule 5 is for dividing the two functions and this is the chain rule first is a constant function we have seen why the derivative of a constant function is zero now we have learned how to differentiate these 13 functions now we have to memorize these 13 rules the six rules of combinations and the 13 rules for 13 functions now there are many ways to memorize it some of you can write it five times on a piece of paper some of you can take a print out and put it on the wall or on the door there is no harm my cousin used to do the same thing putting the formula on the wall not these are small formula he used to do that for big big formula very big formula half page formula like that kind of things 
but please put it you have to know these 13 formula these 13 formula will help you in your exam 2 quiz 2 exam final exam and quiz 3 in all exams these formula will come you will have sine cosine tangent secant cosecant cotangent and cosecant so please remember the exponential function the logarithmic function 8th is exponential 9th is logarithmic function then the inverse functions these four inverse functions are sufficient and we don't have to know more inverse functions there are two more inverse functions which are, we will not do it in this semester so just memorize these rules and your life will be easy your exams will be easy we will be using the rules of differentiating these nine functions along with these rules of combinations what are the combinations multiply with a number add and subtract multiply and here you divide and this is the chain rule We'll be discussing the chain rule again in the next chapters and times to come. The formula 1 to 5 was done in the last class in detail. So this is not new. And this x power n also was done. Sine and cosine you have seen today. And we also saw it in the definition. The limit definition how to get how sine derivative of sine is cosine. And how the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So just remember that, so this is it. So we'll be discussing this in the class in detail. So please attend all your classes. You can chat with me online chat anytime. You can send me emails. I'll try to answer your questions, but email I take some time because I'm busy with other classes also. So I do it at the end of the day or sometimes in the weekend when I get 40, 50 emails in one day. I cannot do it the same day, but please feel free to do it. Submit your assignments and work regularly and please ask your friends to come and learn. This is a golden chance for all of us to use a new way of teaching and a new way of learning. Thank you. Salaam Alaikum.